He's coached at the NHL level as an assistant, the AHL level as a head coach. Was tutored under John Tortorella and Todd Richards. And he is now officially the head coach of the Columbus Blue Jackets as they hire from within. Ladies and gentlemen, it's our pleasure to officially introduce Brad Larson, head coach of the Blue Jackets, on the power play today. Brad, welcome to the show. Is it true that you're buddies with Martin Buran? He says you guys had a world junior connection. Is that true? Welcome. We, we did. We are we are buddies. Um, we have some funny stories about that. But, yes, there is a connection there for sure with Marty. Okay, That's Lars, good. do you remember December of 95 in Campbellton, New Brunswick, at 5.30 <laughs> a.m. when the phone rang and you answered? And I don't know if you remember, but if you do, uh, you can tell the rest of the story. I, I, I actually remember this vividly because – this is the call that we're all waiting for in the morning to see if we've made the team or not. And me and Marty were roommates and the phone rang and I picked it up and they said, is Marty there? And I said, yes, indeed. <laughs> and I gave it to Marty and unfortunately Marty got some bad news and he had to leave the room and uh, I found out he didn't make it. And I was sitting there waiting to see what was going to happen. Marty came back and it was tough to watch him go. And, and then I stayed in my room for the next all the way to the time we were supposed to report for breakfast because I didn't know if they may be calling me or not. So it was a great day for me. It was not a good day for Marty. Uh, a tough moment, but uh, all worked out well for him. So that was the Red Deer tournament that changed the tournament because you guys won in the dressing room, right, Brad? No, no, this wasn't the Red Deer one. This was uh, this was the uh, the Boston one. Boston, yep. Oh, the Aginla tournament. Sorry, I call it the Aginla tournament. Sure. Although I, yeah, I remember you had a pretty good. Didn't you score in a two nothing game, Brad? If memory serves correct. Oh geez, if I did, I don't really remember. I didn't score a lot. I wasn't there to score. I was there to check, but uh, uh, it might have been. There was there was one game I think I scored maybe in the USA game in the first one. That was it. Yeah, yeah, I think that was a 2 nothing game. So that was a great tournament. Nobody was there, uh, unfortunately. That's a story for another day. But you were uh, part of the 96 and 97. Marty was also back in 97, right? So you guys reconnected at least for that, Marty? Yeah, well, Lars was our captain. And that's when, I, you know, I look back to some of the players I played with. And I'm like, I could tell that these guys were going to be coaches or were going to be in hockey. And I think right then, you look back to the 97 tournament in Geneva, Switzerland, and we didn't have a great team, but Brad was our captain and uh, brought everybody together. Uh, and uh, Mike Babcock was our coach. And I could tell right back then that you were going to be a coach. So did you know, like, throughout your career that coaching was going to be something you wanted to get into? Because I remember seeing it in you, and, and now you are. You're an NHL coach. Well, I appreciate that, Marty. But uh, yeah, I, I did actually early on in, in even late junior, I, I always had this, I guess, passion to teach or just be part of something and help, um, you know, and, and I was fortunate to play 300 games in the NHL, but I was a very marginal player at best and, and a role player and really just fighting for my life every year to stay in the league. Um, and I was hurt a lot. So when I was hurt a lot, you get a lot of reflection time, and and I always had to, you know, kind of have that uh, that real honest talk with myself, saying what what if hockey was to end today, what do you want to do? And it always came back to coaching for me. I I, I wanted to be as close to the game as possible and try to make the biggest impact I could. And um, being able to 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 work with these guys now, the players, and you know, I've been fortunate in the American League and worked four years there as, as a head and an assistant and. In the last seven years here with uh, with the organization of Columbus and the NHL, it's it's there's there's nothing better than that. It, it's a grind. It's tough, and you have your ups and downs. And um, but really, the, the, just getting to work with these athletes every day and, and just try and help them be better people and and players, it, it's so rewarding. I, I've I've always had a passion to coach. We're with Brad Larson, former NHLer, two time world junior champion uh, and now head coach of the Columbus Blue Jackets. Um, we had a segment on the show this year called the bold and the blue jackets. I'm sure you heard about it. I'd like to think you, everyone in hockey listens to the show. That's what, that's what they tell us anyway. Uh, it was an up and down year. At least you were there. You were under torts. You've learned from some people. John Davidson came on. Uh, he was great when he uh, rejoined the organization. So what is job one for you and what has to change? I don't know if the word's culture, but 
You want to keep who wants to be there. No one wants to be in a relationship when the person doesn't want to be with you. So how does it work out with Seth Jones? And how do you keep a different culture and positive mindset, Brad? Well, I mean, there's a lot to unpack in that question. But uh, first of all, I, you know, as, as far as culture, culture is a word that gets thrown around a lot. And, um, you know, I, I, I think we've had a tremendous culture here the last four or five years. I mean, we were up to last year, we had made play, playoffs four straight. You heard people talk about our teams. We were hard to play against and, and uh, committed and, and an organized heavy team. So um, I don't think culture is the issue. I think last year definitely was a down year and, and we had some change. There was a pandemic. There was a lot of factors that played into last year and uh, some individuals that didn't have their best year. Um, so, you know, we it, culture needs to be really coupled with identity. And I, I felt that we lost our identity. Um, we, we had we'd done a really good job as an organization and staff and the players and buying into that identity of what we were. And, um, we got away from that. And, and so I, I, I just think, you know, again, stuff's going to happen every year. Uh, we've been through a lot here in, in Columbus as far as uh, different scenarios that have played out. Um, you know, this one uh, with Seth, we're going to wait and see. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, uh, uh, decisions will be made and, and we will move forward no matter what, what that looks like. So, um, the, the city of Columbus, I always say, is I feel silly trying to defend it. There's nothing to defend. It, it is a, it's an outstanding community, outstanding place to, to coach and to play. Um, you know, many players come back here, stay, live, uh, raise families here. So, um, you know, every every time there's been a situation, it's been different. Everybody likes to, to kind of play the same narrative, but I, I really don't believe it is the same narrative. And, and individuals, uh, you know, acquire different rights at different spots in their career and, and they make decisions so I think for us just getting back to who we are and being a hard-nosed team and, and being organized and playing skilled and fast and um, you know I, I think right now if our team's going to look different in September no question and, and so um, that compass may change and what what direction it's going to look like and, and we'll plan accordingly when we get there. Brad, so I played under John Tortorella uh, with the New York Rangers and Mike Sullivan was his assistant and then Sully ended up going to Pittsburgh and winning a couple of cups, which is great for him. Um, and I think he learned a lot from from being with Torts, but he brought his own thing to his style of coaching. So I'm sure you learned a lot from Torts the last few years here, but what is your own style and things that you want to establish um, either being a tough coach, a, a player's coach? What, what is your mentality when it comes to that? Well, it's a good point, Marty. With, with, with you know, I, I've absorbed as much as I could from Torch the last six years being with him, and um, not just as a mentor, but as a friend. He is, he is a dear friend for life. Um, Torch will always be that that person for me. And you know, I think I, I take a, I took a lot from Torch, and, and where we saw Ada again, you got to remember when he came here. I I he didn't bring me here. I was already here, and so he didn't know me. I didn't know him, and and we developed a, a very strong rapport and relationship. Um, I think just through through trust, and it took uh, it took time to to build. And but Torch's Torch's passion to win is is it's incredible, and the amount he cares for his players and and the staff and the organization it goes goes so far. Uh, people don't really get to see that side of him. He is he is such a tremendous person. Um, yeah, he's hard. He's, he's hard. But um, as far as me, I, I, the one thing that I was told early on uh, when I was going to start going is don't ever lose who you are. And I will not do that. I, I, I am, you know, I am going to be my own man in this situation. I certainly have I've learned from Torch, but I've also, I've also learned from, you know, Todd McClellan, who I had three years in junior and, and Mike Babcock in world juniors. And I've learned from uh, Todd Richards, who was here with tremendous coach and, um, you know, Ken Hitchcock, who, who mentored me when I was younger and just getting in. So all these guys, Bob Hartley's another one. You know, I had him three different times as a player. So these guys all had their strengths. And, you know, and I tried to absorb that as a player and as a coach. Um, but ultimately, you've got to be your own person. And so, you know, I'm a very passionate person. i got a lot of energy. Um, I want our teams to be structured and organized, but uh, play extremely hard. And, and you know, and, and I don't ever want to get in the player's way. I want to help them just be the best they can be in, in every situation, try and put them in the proper situation. So um, I, I just look forward to the challenge. I think it's, it's, it's exciting. I'm, I'm very revved up about this and 
we still have some time, but uh, I look uh, look forward to this this challenge and the opportunity.